You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Prime Minister Modi says India are reducing dependence on foreign countries in healthcare. Activists say Gilgit Baltistan miseries due to Pakistani occupation need reunion with India. And Taliban made no firm commitment to open schools for Afghan girls, says US Envoy. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday in a post-budget webinar said that healthcare could be seen in terms of pre- and post-COVID pandemic systems and added that the pandemic tested even prosperous nations across the globe. The PM said his government is constantly trying to reduce the country's dependence on foreign nations and underlined the importance of strong health infrastructure. The way India's pharma sector has gained trust of the whole world during the pandemic is unprecedented, he said. PM Modi stressed that a developed health and wellness ecosystem can be created in India only with efforts of all stakeholders. As of Monday, India reported 2,901 active cases of COVID-19. The South Asian nation has administered more than 2.2 billion anti-COVID vaccine doses so far. When the pandemic peak was at the peak, some countries had to take medical devices, such things as life दुर्भाग्य से हथियार बन गई थी बीते वर्षों के बजट में भारत ने इन सभी विषयों पर बहुत ध्यान दिया है हम ये निरंतर कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि भारत की विदेशों पर निर्भरता कम से कम रहे Moving on, crisis at Pakistan will be required to give an assurance that its balance of payments deficit is fully financed for the remaining period of an IMF program, Esther Perez Ruiz, the lender's resident representative, said on Monday. The external financing is one of the last in a string of prior actions the IMF wants Islamabad to complete before it clears nearly $1.1 billion funding stalled since late last year, she said. Long-time ally China is the only country that has so far committed a refinancing of $2 billion out of the $1.2 billion has already been credited to Pakistan's central bank. The government is undertaking belt tightening and aims to increase revenues, though taxes, a move which has shattered the business community. Well, Pakistan's former Prime Minister and opposition PTI Chairman Imran Khan on Sunday dodged his arrest when Islamabad police arrived at his Zaman Park residence to take him into custody for his persistent absence in the court. The police officials had to face thousands of supporters who prevented their entry into Khan's residence and were informed about his unavailability by PTI leader Shibli Faraz. Police officials left the location after serving the arrest summons to Faraz. However, later in the evening, Imran Khan addressed his supporters from his residence. He said he had neither kneeled before any institution or person, nobody let the nation do so. The PDI chairman said if the government wants, they can put his name in no exit control list as he has no intention to leave the country. The deposed prime minister has multiple cases registered against him, ranging from gathering illegal funds for his political party to unlawfully selling gifts from foreign dignitaries. Reports suggest Khan will be required to appear in court on March 7th and failing to do so will lead to his arrest. Moving on, Dr. Amjad Ayub Mirza, a Kashmiri activist, has said that the root cause of all miseries in Gilgit Baltistan is its illegal occupation by Pakistan and has urged India to save the region from doomed future as it bears the brunt amid Pakistan's ongoing economic crisis. Kashmiri activist Dr. Amzad Ayub Mirza has said that the root cause of the problems of Gilgit Baltistan is the territory's occupation by Pakistan and has appealed efforts should be made to reunite it with Mother India. Mirza, who lives in exile in UK, highlighted there is growing unrest in Gilgit Baltistan and Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir due to shortage of food, gas, and electricity caused by Islamabad's flawed policies. 
He said, while Pakistan grapples with an economic crisis, people in both the territories are bearing the brunt of unfair taxes with no development in sight. There is no food, there is no gas, there is no electricity for a people who, who sit on mountains of gold reserves, who sit on mountains of gem reserves, of uranium and lithium reserves. Yet, our people are starving. Steps should be taken to facilitate the reunion of Gilgit Baltistan and Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir with Mother India. India has long called upon Pakistan to vacate areas of Jammu and Kashmir under its illegal occupation, stating that they are integral and inalienable part of India. People in the occupied territories blame even after 75 years they are denied even basic rights by Islamabad and are meted out with severe brutality for voicing their concerns. Afghanistan's Taliban authorities have not given any pledge to reopen schools and universities for girls and women in the new school year. EU Special Envoy Thomas Nicholson said on Sunday after a visit to Kabul. The envoy said that he heard no firm commitment from Taliban ministers during his meetings. Opening the schools and universities to provide quality education to Afghan boys and girls, women and men is not optional, he said. Since the hardline Islamist group returned to power in 2021, Afghanistan has become the only country in the world to deny female education. No foreign government has so far recognized the Taliban's rule mainly over this issue, leading to greater isolation. Well, in a unique celebration of the Hindu festival of colors, Holi, devotees from across India gathered in the holy city of Varanasi this past weekend and smeared fire ash on each other as they reveled in the precursor to the festivities. Take a look. Devout Hindus from across India celebrated Holi, the festival of colors, by smearing each other with ashes of cremated dead people near the banks of River Ganga in northern holy city of Varanasi, upholding a centuries-old tradition. It is believed that this tradition began when Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva, played holy with pyre ashes with his dear gang of ghosts, goblins and ghouls who are not allowed to come where humans are residing to celebrate the return of his wife, Goddess Parvati. This is the most important thing the holy अपने आप की होली है यहां पे हर जगह से लोग आते हैं चिता से भस्म निकाल के जलते हुए चिता के साथ भी खेला जाता है जो लोग दास संस्कार के लिए आते हैं उनके साथ भी खेला जाता है और कोई किसी भी प्रकार का भेदभाव नहीं कोई किसी से भी बुरा नहीं कुछ भी नहीं मानता है Celebrated at the onset of spring, Holi is mainly associated with the eternal love of the Hindu Lord Krishna and his consort Radha Though it is a single-day festival elsewhere in India, it is almost a 10-day affair in parts of Uttar Pradesh state. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.